Now, with the main stories making the headlines, it's the ITV News. Russia warns of fresh strikes on Ukraine's capital. The threats to Kyiv follow the sinking of Russia's flagship in the Black Sea, for which Ukraine has claimed responsibility. Russian ships can go to the bottom only. Also tonight, more than 150 are injured as Israeli police clash with Palestinians at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque. Harry and Meghan arrive in The Hague for the Invictus Games after their secret visit to the Queen. England's test captain Joe Root steps away from the crease. And Britain basks in glorious sunshine on the hottest day of the year so far. This is ITV News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. Russia has threatened to carry out fresh strikes on Kyiv after its prized warship sank in the Black Sea. Well, overnight, Moscow said it targeted a missile production factory in the Ukrainian capital. It said that was revenge for an attack on a Russian village and warned that further targeting of its territory would cause an escalation. But it came just hours after the Moskva went down with Ukraine claiming responsibility. A claim back tonight by the US. And some believe that is what's behind the latest latest assault on Kyiv, from where our correspondent Peter Smith reports. In Ukraine's capital, the quiet of the curfew was disrupted early this morning. The sirens sounded to warn of more incoming fire. The Kremlin claims to have hit Kyiv overnight, retaliation for attacks on Russian soil. Tonight, sea-based, high-precision, long-range calibre missiles hit a military facility in the outskirts of Kyiv. As a result of the attack on the Juliani machine building plant Vizar, the workshops for the production and repair of long-range and medium-range anti-aircraft missile systems, as well as anti-ship missiles, were destroyed. The Kyiv strikes are unconfirmed by Ukraine, but this is an escalation after the flagship of Putin's Black Sea fleet suffered damage. Russia has since confirmed the Moskova missile cruiser has now sunk after bombarding Ukrainian targets with impunity until now. The Kremlin is still claiming this was an accident, that it was their own ammunition that exploded and Moskova then sunk in a storm. But here in Kyiv, President Zelensky has claimed responsibility and thanked the people he called the true defenders of Ukraine. Those who drove the enemy out of the north, those who have shown that Russian aviation is defenseless, even though Russia has spent tens of billions of dollars on various systems to protect its aircraft, those who have shown that Russian ships can go to the bottom only. While Ukraine celebrates its first success in the Black Sea, the people here are still braced for more misery. Cities like Kharkiv in the east remain under constant bombardment and Putin is already preparing the second phase of Russia's invasion. Peter Smith, ITV News, Kyiv. Tear gas and stun grenades were fired at a holy site in Jerusalem this morning as Israeli police clashed with Palestinians. More than 150 people were injured at the Al-Aqsa Mosque where thousands of worshippers had gathered. It comes at a sensitive time following recent violence and as Ramadan coincides with Passover and Easter. Here's Martha Fairley. From the early hours, Palestinians gathered at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in Jerusalem. At the site sacred to both Muslims and Jews, they began throwing fireworks and stones. After three weeks of growing violence, they'd been urged to defend both the mosque and their country by the Palestinian foreign ministry. As Israeli police moved in, they came under a hail of rocks and rubble. More than 150 people were injured, some carried away on stretchers while the violence continued. Rioters used screens and folded chairs as makeshift shields 
as the police fired tear gas and stun grenades. In a week where Ramadan, Passover and Easter all coincide, tensions have been running high. You would imagine that it might bring people together and look for a way to pray maybe together as they, uh, they believe in the same God. But as it happens, when religious extremism and nationalism enter into this uh, equation, it brings exactly the opposite. Police say they've made hundreds of arrests and Israel's Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has ordered crossings into the West Bank and Gaza to be closed from this afternoon for at least the first two nights of the Jewish festival Passover. Meeting with the police chief and national security minister, he said they were working to calm things on Temple Mount and throughout Israel. By midday, the site had been cleared and reopened with 60,000 people attending the main Friday prayers. But Israeli authorities remain prepared. Similar clashes during Ramadan last year led to an 11-day war with Gaza's rulers Hamas. Arthur Fairley, ITV News. Well, here fresh allegations have emerged about the disgraced former Conservative MP Imran Ahmad Khan. This week he was convicted of sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy. Well, now the Guardian newspaper has spoken to a man who alleges Khan propositioned him when he was 16. Our political correspondent Harry Horton is here. So, Harry, tell us more about these new claims. Well, this man said uh, he met Imran Ahmed Khan at a birthday party in Suffolk in 2015. He told the Guardian newspaper Mr Khan offered to perform a sex act and suggested the pair take drugs. Uh, now, Mr Khan was in his early 40s at the time of this incident. The man uh, would have been 16 years old. Uh, the man uh, reportedly came forward with his allegation after Imran Ahmed Khan was found guilty earlier this week of sexually assaulting a boy uh, after forcing him to drink alcohol in 2008. Uh, Mr Khan was expelled from the Conservative Party on Monday. Yesterday he said he intends to focus on his appeal against that conviction and so will be resigning as Wakefield's MP. That will trigger a hotly contested by-election in the West Yorkshire seat later this year. Uh, so far, Imran Ahmed Khan's lawyers have not commented on this fresh allegation. All right, Harry, thank you. There's been travel disruption on the roads and railways today as people headed off for their Easter break. It's been predicted that more than 21 million journeys will be made by car this weekend and we've seen plenty of congestion as a result. Our reporter Yasmin Bottleby is uh, overlooking the M6 at Stafford. Yasmin, not how many would have wanted their long weekend to start. Uh, no, it's not the nicest start to a break, is it? Although you can't blame people for wanting to get out and about. This is the first Easter weekend in three years with no COVID restrictions. The sun is shining. And add to that that there are hundreds of rail engineering projects going on this weekend, which is forcing even more people onto the roads. Uh, this stretch of the M6 tonight, not looking too bad. We've been here through the day and there has been some quite heavy congestion. Other hotspots today have included roads around Bristol, London and Kent. It has, though, been a very good Friday for service stations with lots of weary passengers needing to stop off. We caught up with a few of them earlier here at Stafford and we asked them how their journeys were going. Horrendous. Like, just we've just looked at the traffic for the rest of the journey and it's just red. Yeah, so we're fed up. The kids have had enough. <laughs> Feels as though there's two or three times much more traffic on the, on the motorway than they would have expected. Every road and every roundabout and stuff like that, and it is chock-a-block. Well, that man told me that he wasn't particularly optimistic about reaching his destination before nightfall. And despite the uh, pretty clear picture here tonight, we are still being warned that there could be further delays well into the weekend. All right, Yasmin, thank you. Well, on top of the other difficulties on the roads, you may be among those to have experienced supplies of petrol and diesel running low recently. Blame has centred on protesters from the group Just Stop Oil, who have been blockading fuel depots. Dozens were arrested today at facilities in Essex and Warwickshire, where they blocked roads and climbed onto tankers. And the government says asylum seekers could be flown to East Africa within weeks. It follows the announcement of a scheme to end, send those claiming asylum in the UK to Rwanda.
The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have arrived in the Netherlands for the opening of the Invictus Games. It follows their surprise stopover in the UK to visit the Queen and Prince Charles. Lizzie Robinson is at The Hague, where the couple arrived uh, this afternoon. Lizzie, this trip, a very personal one uh, for Harry in particular. Yes, Lucrezia. The couple are in the Netherlands for Prince Harry's Invictus Games and they're actually attending a reception that's going on behind me at the moment, as you can probably hear. But we saw them arrive here a little bit earlier and this is their first time in Europe as a couple since they stepped back as working members of the royal family in 2020. But it wasn't their first stop while they were over here. Yesterday they paid a secret visit to see the Queen and the Prince of Wales at Windsor Castle. And it was the first time they have all met face to face since Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview where they made a whole host of allegations. Yesterday, though, being seen as something of an olive branch. I think the focus now, though, for the couple is very much here in the Netherlands and on the Invictus Games. Prince Harry is founding patron of the Games and he is very personally invested in this. Having served two tours of Afghanistan, he established the Games in 2014 to help and support injured and sick servicemen and women and I think it's something he cares very deeply about. And over the next couple of days, we'll see them attending the opening ceremony. We'll hear speeches from both of them. And we'll also see them attending some of the competition. All right, Lizzie in The Hague. Thank you. England's test cricketers are in need of a new men's captain tonight after Joe Root stepped down despite his own impressive performances with the bat. The team's form has plummeted and the 31-year-old says that after five years in the job, it's time for change. Chris Scudder reports now on the end of Captain Root's innings. He arrived as a fresh-faced hopeful five years ago and leaves with the most ever test wins by an England captain. But he also lost the most and his recent record of only one win in the last 17 is England's worst run since the 1980s. A thrashing in the ashes, then a humiliating defeat in the West Indies. But Root then did not want to leave. I'm very passionate about trying to take this team forward and you know, I will control all that I can. But if seasoned cricket watchers were hedging their bets about whether he'd stay or go, it turns out the man whose shirt bore the legend Route 66 was not getting his kicks as captain, after all, prompting an about turn. I've loved leading my country, he said in a statement, but recently it's hit home how much of a toll it's taken on me and the impact it's had on me away from the game. And I think after a while you can see in that third test match that um, he was coming to the end of his uh, you know, reign and uh, he just felt like it's time to move on now. Root will stay on as a batsman with nearly 10,000 runs already to his name, while the England and Wales cricket board hope he'll now ease his successor into one of English sport's highest profile roles. And while there's no word yet on who that successor might be, the overwhelming favourite is the man whose own heroics on the field have already passed into legend, the current vice-captain, Ben Stokes. Chris Scudder, ITV News, Lords. And finally, as the long Easter weekend begins, many people have been basking in the sunshine on the hottest day of the year so far. Temperatures peaked at 23.4 degrees Celsius in London's St James's Park. Sigil Carrier has joined some of those enjoying the weather at the seaside in Kent. And Sigil, people there making the most of the sunshine. Yes, Lucrezia, it was the perfect start to the Easter weekend here on the beach in Whitstable. Lots of people uh, coming out to enjoy a paddle and a picnic and, of course, uh, an ice cream. And enjoy the combination of warm spring sunshine along with an Easter bank holiday weekend. The first in two years without Covid restrictions. We've just come back from Spain, actually hotter here than it is in Spain, or when we were in Spain anyway, so yeah, really nice. Amazing to be in the sun, it's so nice, just by the sea, and picnic, and kids not having activities to do, and people out and smiling, it's lovely. It's just so nice, like the sun and then the wind, and just like a cool breeze on you, instead of just staying inside, just watching TV and doing nothing really. It's nice to get um, a bit of seaside air and a bit of sunshine, it's lovely. 
so it was a very good Friday here and not the hottest on record but a very pleasant 20 to 22 degrees Celsius it should stay warm for the rest of the weekend before it's expected to be a little cooler on Monday all right so Joel, the sunshine makes everything better thank you that's it I'm back with the late news at 10 until then enjoy your evening bye-bye